Good morning. As I now record this lecture, it is the 100th day of the war and the shameful, unjustifiable attack by Russian Federation on Ukraine. We are all following this war in real time. The heroic stand of the Ukrainians, but also the brutal crimes committed by Russian soldiers against the civilian population. This map comes from the website Attack Stop War, which documents day after day the destruction of civilian facilities and the casualties of civic adults and children. This data is of course shocking, and I think that none of us expected that it would ever take place on the European continent in the 21st century. A state of war is a state of chaos, also in the world of education, including academic institutions. Since the beginning of the war, the Russian army has destroyed the infrastructure of about 1,500 educational facilities, mainly schools and universities. The Ukrainian government estimates that the value of these losses is close to 2 billion US dollars. Only in the Kharkiv and Donetsk regions were damaged nearly 700 educational institutions, which is 40% of the total number, and the 52 were completely destroyed. In the city of Kharkiv, 19 university buildings were totally damaged. According to Ukrainian Ministry of Education and Science, 35,000 scientists worked in Ukraine before the war. The highest education system in Ukraine consists of state and private universities divided into two large groups in terms of accreditation levels. A total of 664 units were functioning before the war. Most universities had resumed classes by April, although 80% of them are held online. In available materials published by Ukrainian universities, you can find such a shocking information on lectures giving their classes in such conditions. As a result of war, 34 universities were evacuated as well as 42 vocational colleges. More than 23,000 teachers, including academics, and over 600,000 pupils and students have gone abroad. And how does it look against the background of the entire refugee migration? Between 24 February and the end of May, a total of 3.7 million people crossed the Polish border. This is by far the biggest migration crisis in the history of Europe after World War II. The approximate number of Ukrainian refugees currently residing in Poland is estimated to near 2 million people. In addition, there are about 1 million Ukrainians who lived in Poland before the war. Due to martial law, Ukrainian men aged between 18 and 65 are not allowed to leave the country. So the vast majority, 91% of war emigrants from Ukraine are women with children. Surveys show that 71% of refugees come from regions that have been directly affected by the war. 39% are residents of biggest Ukrainian cities. From the first days after war has started, almost the whole Polish society, NGOs and local governments got involved in multidimensional help, not only for war refugees, but also for the Ukrainian state. Charity fundraising, preparation of accommodation places, care for children and the sick, collections and transports of food and all other necessary goods have become a permanent feature of the Polish landscape. The central government was also involved in direct military aid to Ukraine. 48% of Ukrainian refugees registered in Poland are children under the age of 18. Moreover, nearly 60% of other refugees declared to stay in Poland if the military operation continue in their homeland and would like to take up employment. Economists of Polish National Bank PKO predict that this year about 3 million refugees from Ukraine will settle in Poland, of which about 30% will be professionally active. This also means that in a short period of time, Polish universities will begin to receive thousands of additional candidates for studies, which request the system of higher education in Poland to be well prepared especially that refugees come mainly to big cities in Poland, such as Kraków, Wrocław, Rzeszów, Poznań, Warsaw or Gdańsk, where the biggest Polish universities are located. Of those who have arrived in Poland in recent months, the number of those expressing a will to admit university is 6.5 thousand. On the other hand, fearing the collapse of the higher education system, the Ministry of Education and Science in Ukraine has gone for a significant liberalization of university admissions. Minister Serhii Szkarliet 
said not long ago that it is extremely important for our children to stay in Ukraine, to study according to Ukrainian standards, not to go abroad, not to seek another faith abroad, but to study and shape the future elite educational and scientific potential of our country. According to the minister, in the event that a student from Ukraine takes up studies in a foreign universities and obtains an appropriate scholarship, the requirement should be to return to Ukraine after the graduation. Since the beginning of war in Poland, scientists from Ukraine have not only received accommodations from themselves and their families, but also support and material aid. There has been the launch of several research grants, ad hoc scholarships and short-term internships dedicated to Ukrainians. However, only a small number of them received employment in Poland, as the fact of being employed would mean termination of the employment contract at the Ukrainian university. Polish higher education institutions have also taken numerous initiatives to support Ukrainian universities themselves. The transfer of short-term aid is accompanied by such initiatives as lobbying in the European Commission to admit Ukrainian institutions to the alliances of European universities as strategic partners. Shortly after the beginning of the war, the Polish Academy of Sciences prepared hundreds of scholarships for Ukrainian scientists. For a period of three months, an amount of several million zlotys was allocated to this purpose. Within the framework of this scholarship, scientists work in institutes of Polish Academy of Sciences, retaining the affiliations of their home Ukrainian scientific units. The National Center of Science in Poland has also prepared a special grant program for scientists from Ukraine within the framework of which their one year stay at Polish academic and scientific institutions is financed. It provides funds for remuneration and research. Individual support programs have been offered by almost all Polish individual universities. Overall, the situation is gradually stabilizing. Due to their own life strategies, there are some Ukrainian scientists who came to Poland after the outbreak of war with an explicit intention to stay in Poland, regardless of the outcome of the war, resigning at the same time from working in the Ukrainian universities, but also people without any contacts in, in the Polish scientific environment. Stabilization in Ukraine, even relative, will be a reason for their prompt return to their homeland. Each of the groups mentioned requires a separate support strategy and the aid activities should be adapted to each of them. Since the beginning of the war, also the University of Gdańsk has been actively involved in helping Ukraine, not only in terms of academic cooperation, but also humanitarian aid. A special financial aid program for Ukrainian students was launched. Two student dormitories for Ukrainian refugees were given on free of charge. The total number of accommodation places is about 400. We run intensive Polish language courses for refugees and candidates for studies. We have also organized special course for those volunteers who want to teach refugees Polish language. We provide psychological support to Ukrainian students. We run a program to diagnose the risk of post-war stress in women and children. A daycare center for children of refugee families on the main campus was also opened. We conducted in-kind and financial collections of food, medicine, sanitary items, clothes, electronics, sleeping bags, mattresses, etc. Nearly 1,000 transports left from us to Ukrainian cities. We accept about 30 scientists, refugees from Ukraine, for short scientific stays within the framework of available grants and scientific projects. We also started to organize the two-week summer school holiday for pupils from Ukraine on university campus in July. A special path for the transfer of students from universities in the areas affected by military operations to continue their education in Poland was also launched. A special procedure of nostrification of higher education diplomas for people from Ukraine was launched as well. We initiated the inclusion of Ukrainian universities into the network of European universities. In the case of our alliance, we signed an agreement with the University of Odessa. At the beginning of May, we have organized together with National Agency for Academic Exchange a large conference entitled Solidarity with Ukraine, which was attended by rectors of the largest universities in Poland, representatives of the Polish Academy of Sciences, Polish Ministry of Science and Education, and most of all, Ukrainian ministers responsible for science and higher education in Ukraine. 
It can be summarized that most universities in Poland, like the University of Gdańsk, are involved in extensive assistance, accommodation, collections, charities, research programs, learning the Polish language, and much, much more. At the conference, we also heard the expectations of the representatives of the Ukrainian government. This sounds as follows. Assistance in the reconstruction of destroyed educational institutions and research and teaching infrastructure. Accession of Ukrainian universities to the structures of the European system of higher education, in particular to partnerships within consortia of European universities and the Erasmus program. Substantive expert support in the preparation of the academic community of Ukraine to apply for support from international sources. In terms of direct support to students and researchers, it is expected to be oriented towards acquiring international knowledge and experience of members of the Ukrainian academic community, enabling the use of libraries, the infrastructure resources of Polish universities within the emphasis on online access, organization of visits, short mobilities, online courses, inclusion of Ukrainian scientists in the research groups operating in European universities, also possibility of participation in research and teaching grants to improve qualifications in order to preserve and develop the potential of higher education in Ukraine. The strategy of cooperation and support for Ukrainian academic community should be based on the win-win principle, which takes into account the interest of all parties involved in joint projects. The Ukrainian side has repeatedly said that it is most afraid of an irreversible brain drain of talented young people. At the conference, all participants agreed that it is necessary at this stage to change the direction of action from intervention to development mode. It is necessary to build a strong expert base that will support changes in higher education in Ukraine in order to give it an, a, a European dimension. What is needed, therefore, are instruments other than these ones used hitherto, which had a more humanitarian dimension. Polish academia is undoubtedly facing the exhaustion of possibilities for permanent support of an aid nature, and therefore systemic projects aim at the preserving and strengthening the scientific potential of Ukraine by systematically incorporating them into existing mechanisms for international cooperation are needed. This is a new dimension of the social responsibility of Polish universities. Achieving these goals requires internationalization of the sources of financing of the assistance provided. Poland is not able to maintain the higher education of Ukraine on its own. Necessary resources directed especially to the needs of Ukrainian academic communities in terms of gaining experience, continuing scientific research, preparing for return to a normal functioning in Ukraine must come from the entire international community. Nowadays, it is crucial to ensure that Ukrainian higher education and science system survives. After the war, it will be crucial to focus on its reconstruction so that it becomes one of the key elements of Ukraine. This dramatic situation and the often tragic circumstances of a brutal war can also become a great opportunity to rebuild the Ukrainian higher education system according to European standards. Thank you very much for your attention.